Miles Lessingham has told Alex Mayer that Hillary claimed she was going to marry Alex. Mayer tells his sister that the computer virus could be the work of terrorists. Jonathan's visit to Caroline's London home panics her into flight. She tricks Amy into coming with her. The Whistler is found at Easthaven. He's killed himself. It's Neville Potter. He leaves a note for Dalgleish admitting all the murders except Hillary's. Caroline's boat is blown up by her terrorist bosses. You're looking well, both of you. Lovely to be back. Oh, good morning. Good morning. Um, I wondered if we might go inside for a little chat. Is it all right if we talk out here? Timmy's asleep. He's been crying most of the night. Sure. Let's go and sit in the car. Am I five? Well, I had to pass on the information about Miss Amphlett. As soon as I had any suspicion, anything concrete had gone. So you contacted them? And before that? Before? Oh, no, no, no. It was just a private visit, nothing else at all. This could have done me a lot of harm. And I imagine it's done harm already. What's the future for Lark Soden, would you say? Now that you've closed production down? You think I don't care about the people who work here, just because I'm leaving? Are you leaving? Yes. The appointment came through this morning. Congratulations. Your sister must be pleased. Well, I, I haven't told her yet. I'm uh, saving the news until I see her. There's still no news about Miss Amphlett, nor the other girl who went out with her. Other girl? I didn't know there was another girl. Well, no one from the station. Toby Gladhill was right. The threat to the computers was genuine. Yes, yes. The uh, virus was just a smokescreen, a tester. Once they'd succeeded in hacking their way into the reactor control, they wouldn't have stood a chance in hell. Nor would the rest of the country. Well, 
managed to avert the danger. Mm. But, uh, I mean, what made her take off like that? I mean, what made her panic and run? Well, that's not known, is it? You know, I'm concerned, deeply concerned, about the future of Larkshaven. I'm sure you are. They must have missed you when you were away. We all did. Dad coped well, though, didn't he? Oh, yes, he coped very well. I expect they told you to take things easy for the next few weeks. We don't want to lose you again, do we? I'd have no one to help me with my dinner parties apart from anything else. I'm thinking of having another one soon for my brother. A celebration. He's hoping to get a new job. You should hear about it today. Would you be leaving then? No, no, no. No, I'll stay here. Miss Mayor? Yes? That night... The night Miss Robarts died... I was there. I crept up to the Abbey ruins. And I saw her running into the sea for a swim. And I saw someone else as well. Who was that? Mrs. Dennison. Sure. Positive. And you've told no one else about this? There's any need to, do you? Now you've told me. Our own special secret. Figures released by the World Health Organization indicate that in the US alone, upwards of 37,000 deaths a year can be directly or indirectly attributed to coal dust particles. Britain's fossil fuel power stations are responsible for a third of the extra carbon dioxide which our country is currently pumping into the atmosphere. The choice, as they say, would seem to be yours. Now, compare the figures on radiation. Have you seen this? When will they ever learn? Police sources confirmed today that Neville Potter, the man now identified as the Norfolk Whistler, had been interviewed but eliminated by Chief Inspector Rickards and his team early in their inquiries. Why? They knew what type of man they were looking for, a loner, probably unmarried, unsociable. Neville Potter was just such a man. Had he been caught when first interviewed, the lives of one prostitute and six innocent women could have been saved. Have we learned nothing from the Yorkshire Ripper fiasco? And so on, and so on, and so on. What's so? Murder victims are always either prostitutes who presumably deserve what they get, or innocent women who don't. You don't believe all that, do you? Why not? Well, it might sell newspapers, but it's nothing to do with the truth. Ah, oh, the truth, yes. Do you remember 79? That prostitute we found in a bed sit in Prade Street. Been dead for a, over a week. Gloria Innes. Yeah. In ex-Chelsea's Gloria. Yes. Do you remember what you said to me? No. I said something like, for God's sake, get that thing out of here. I turned around and you were standing at the door I remember this like it was yesterday. And you said, the word is body, Sergeant. Or, if you prefer, victim. Or even deceased. What you were looking at was a woman. 
She was not a thing when she was alive, and she is not a thing now. <laughs> it was a long time ago. Yes, but words stick, don't they? True or false. Is that why you asked me to come round? No, not really. I wanted some advice. You're thinking of resigning. <laughs> How did you guess? You're not thinking of driving like that, are you? Uh, no. Where do you live? Farmer. Come on, I'll give you a lift. Are you all right? I saw you the other day, didn't I, at the uh, power station? Yeah. Is this it? Yeah. Don't think I'll go in yet. Mother will be asking questions. Are you sure you're all right? Um, not really. I think I'll go for a walk. Clear my head. Good luck.
All right, just a minute. Susie, how did you... What are you doing here? <laughs> oh, I couldn't stand it any longer. Oh, no, neither could I. Oh, uh, I didn't have quite enough money for the taxi. Well, I'll get it. Don't go away. I won't. How much is that, Steve? Five, all right. Great. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you. Why well, did water it? Too much, though. No, it missed you so much it pined away. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Why didn't you ring me? I didn't have time. Mummy popped up the road to see Mrs. B. I just left a note and came. What, you just walked out? <laughs> you did. Mm. But listen, are you, uh, are you all right? Yeah, yeah, I'm just tired. Oh, that's Oliphant. He's come to pick me up. All right, Gov. Jumbo, look who's here. All right, Mrs. Rickards. I have to go. Well, that's fine. You go. Listen, don't worry about me. Be all right. Mm. Okay. See you then. All right. Yeah. ID on the second body. Oh, it's Amy Cam, all right. Washed up under the tide, South Anston, she did. Have you, uh. Have you informed that bloke? What's his name? Pasco? Yeah, dirty minded little devil. Really? Why? Well, he admitted he used to spy on Ilya Robarts taking a nightly swim. That can't have been, what, on a couple of hundred yards away from the caravan? So Amy Cam must have known about it. And they had a dog lead, remember? And that Caroline Amphlet, she had a dog. You know what I reckon, Gov? No, but I've got a feeling you're going to tell me. You're making a bit of a mess of the beach, aren't you? What does it matter? We're polluting the whole bloody planet! Let's put it out, eh? Leave it till tomorrow. I suppose you're right. Dead. She drowned. I suppose you know already. Yes, I'm. Uh, I'm sorry. Very sorry. Fancy a beer? Well, there's tea. No coffee left, I'm afraid.
I was burning all my pen-up records with the rest of the rubbish. It was never any use. Just a way to feel important. You said as much yourself. Did I? Well, I had no right to. What were you doing, huh? London, I suppose. Look for a job. The university aren't likely to extend my grant. I can't say I blame them either. What sort of job? Anything. One that pays lots of money, preferably. Mammon. Hmm. Was Hampton Timmy? A couple of social workers came a few hours ago. A place of safety order. He screamed when they took him. I'll never forget the way he looked at me. Whatever happened to our caring society? Well, I doubt they had any choice. He couldn't have stayed here indefinitely, could he? Why not? I'd looked after him for over a year. I'd done everything. But I've got no rights whatsoever. What about her family? They don't give a damn. They haven't even been in touch. That's what makes it so unfair. So, she, um, she left nothing, then? Uh, no records, no papers, no, uh, no diary? Not even a note. Did that surprise you? No. Nothing about her surprised me. That's just the way she was. A free spirit. She got the old postcard from time to time, but that was about it. Once I'd burnt this lot, there'll be nothing left to show that she was ever even here. I should feel sad, but all I can feel is this terrible anger. Anger? What about the other woman? Do you believe that? Don't you? No. <laughs> Sometimes, on a Sunday, she used to go off saying that she was going to meet her lover in the sand dunes. I thought it was a joke. I needed to believe that. When she came back, I knew. She looked exultant. She was glowing with happiness. Look, no, is it... Uh, is it really so important to you, this affair she had with Caroline, even if it does turn out to be true? What you had together... The affection, the friendship, the, the caring for Timmy. Does that all go for nothing because she chose to have her sex life with someone else? Please don't get up, Mr. Copley. I wonder if I could talk to you privately for a moment? As a priest. I want to consult you as a priest. If we are faced with a decision, a dilemma. How do we know what's right? Our conscience will tell us, if we are prepared to listen. Still a small voice like the voice of God? Not like Meg. Conscience is the voice of God. But how can we be sure that it isn't our own voice we're hearing? Our own subconscious desires? I mean, can we ever really break free the of... Devices and desires of our own hearts? Yes. Couldn't it be our conscience just telling us just just what we most want to hear. 
I haven't found it so. My conscience usually directed me against my own desires. Oh. What you thought were your own desires. I have found it helpful to think of conscience as an instrument, let's say a stringed instrument. The message is in the music, but if we don't keep it in good repair and practice regularly, we get only an imperfect response. But suppose my conscience tells me what's right, but if I obey it, I'm going to hurt someone else. We must do what we know to be right and leave the consequences to God. It's very hard sometimes. If you could tell me more specifically what is troubling you. No, no, I, I can't do that. I could give you an example. Suppose I found out that someone has stolen something from his employer. If I expose him, he'll be sacked. His family will suffer. I may feel that the firm could afford to lose a few pounds rather than cause all that hurt to innocent people. You should speak to him then and get him to return the money at least. I can see that might present certain practical difficulties. If it's something that couldn't be given back. We must still do what our conscience tells us is right. We cannot always judge the consequences. We must leave the consequences to God. I see. Thank you for listening. You've been very helpful. I'm sure I know what to do. Good evening, Dr. Lessingham. Good evening. Sorry to bother you on your day off, but I wonder would you mind answering a few more questions for us? Depends on what they are, doesn't it? Well, it's about Caroline Amplett. Yes, I knew she had a boat. Yes, I'm sorry to hear what happened to her. No, she didn't mention anything to me about taking it out last night. Had she done so, I'd have told her not to be such a damn fool. Apparently it was a powerful boat. Not in a sea like that. Look, uh, can we go aboard? Presumably, Dr. Lessing, this is the same boat you took out the evening Hillary Robart was murdered. I've told you everything I know about that evening. You've got a nasty scrape on your oar there, sir. How about that one? Offshore water tower by the power station. Carelessness. Something we're all prone to from time to time. Would you mind telling me when you got the scrape, sir? That evening. That evening? You told us that at no time were you ever within sight of the beach where Hilary Robarts took her last swim, but if you were near the water tower, well, well, that just can't be correct, sir. Depends what you mean by in sight. Oh, I suppose I could have seen the beach through my binoculars if I'd happened to look, which I didn't. You could also have put ashore on that beach. These are yours, I take it? Yes. Almost new, size nine. Very similar to the type that you put in for the church jumble sale, except, of course, those were bumbles, weren't they, sir? I'm sorry, I don't see the relevance of that question. Oh, don't you? You had the key to Dr. Gledhill's cottage, I believe. Yes. And you used that key to gain entry on the night before his suicide. What were you looking for, Dr. Lessing? I was looking for my friend. Your lover. All right. All right. All right. We spent one night together, two weeks before he died. He was kind. It was the first and last time. I was in love with him. He knew because I told him. He wasn't in love with me, and he wasn't gay. Not that it's any business of yours. 
I'm telling you this because I'd rather you had facts from me than rumours from other people. You're obviously grubbing around to find any sort of dirt that you can find. Did Miss Robots know about this relationship? But what possible relevance you... Are you enjoying this? Is this how you get your kicks? Oh, just answer the question, please, sir. Hmm? Yes, Hillary knew. Did she ever confront you with it? No, 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 but she made it clear that she knew. Did she ever tell anyone else? Oh, no, no, no. The information was too valuable to waste. She was saving it in case she needed to use it. Was she blackmailing you? No. No. She's done it. Susie. She's had the baby. Half an hour ago. Wonderful. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Well, come on. Is it a boy or a girl? Didn't I say? Sorry. It's a little girl. Stella Louise. We're calling her Louise after Susie's mother. <laughs> yes. Well, thanks for letting me know. Right. I, uh, I thought you should. Now, you give her my regards, won't you? Yes, I will. I will. Thank you. Ah, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Yes, they're waiting for you in the library. Thank you. I'm just making coffee. Would you be requiring sandwiches, sir? There's still some beef left, or I could rustle up some cheese for you. No, just coffee, thank you. Just coffee. This works. Ah, Adam. Good afternoon. Good. Thank you. Peter's getting you something? Yes, thank you. Good. Well, do sit down. Yes. Uh, it's all right. He's cleared. <clears throat> well? Oh, well, I managed to have a word with Pasco. He seems to believe the official line. Unwise boat trip together. Fuel explosion probably caused by a collision with an unknown vessel. I don't think you'll have any trouble with him. Still left nothing incriminating in the caravan. Burned the lot. Good of you to do this for us, Adam. Much appreciated. I still think you ought to put Inspector Rickards in the picture. Terrorism? Hardly his cup of tea. Seems to be coming around to the point of view that it was our two sailors that murdered Miss Robarts. Where's the motive? Robarts could have suspected Amplet. After all, she was acting administrative officer. She was intelligent. Conscientious. Over-conscientious, didn't you say, ma'am? Yes. She was conscientious. And Amy Cam quarrelled with Robards, threatened her. It would suit you to resolve this case as soon as possible. But if I were the investigating officer, the robot's file would stay open. Let us give thanks that you aren't. Your people found nothing in Miss Amphlett's house? Clean. No radio, no documents. If she did intend to do a bunk, she cleared out before she left. Mm. Their own people could have killed them both. Once the Lark Soakham plan failed, they were expendable. Mm. To fake an accident would have been the sensible course. I'd have done the same thing. You never suspected, Miss Amphlett? No. Did you ever see the other girl, Amy? Once, I think. Blonde dyed hair. Rather pretty face. She was carrying the child. Hardly terrorist material. A runner. Idealistic, animal rights. Green anarchist. Ten a penny. Expendable. And you really believe she would have abandoned her child? A child? Why not? 
That fellow could have looked after it, Pasco, if you ask me. Hmm. That child had a pretty low priority with his mother. Yet you're saying she hated robots and could have murdered her because she once pushed her child. You'll keep your doubts to yourself, Adam. That doesn't need saying. Then why say it? Your coffee, sir. I'm sorry. Yes, thank you. What about the rest of them? I think you can leave them to us. By the way, there'd be no reports of a collision. There wouldn't be if their own people ran them down. And the alternative? One of our ships. Is that what you're saying? Thankfully, the result's the same either way. Never really grasp what they're starting, do they? No truth. No stability, blown like paper with every wind. Wild ideas they think worth dying for. Maybe because they want to die. Well, if you can't cope with living, look for a cause you can convince yourself is worth dying for. Making sure we actually leave the premises. How do they find these places? Rent them, borrow them, or just break in? Well, it probably belongs to one of their own people. Now they'll disappear. Check for fingerprints. Dust out the furniture. As if they were never there. You got one thing wrong, though. Well, never anything physical between Amy and Caroline. No. So you think we still have a killer alive in the neighborhood? Don't you? Are you alone? Yes. Come in. I'm interrupting. Obviously. That doesn't mean I don't welcome an interruption. I only mark the typing errors. Thank you. I hope it wasn't too much of a chore. No, no, I enjoyed it. You didn't come just to return these? No. Alice, I have to talk to you. You are talking to me. Those two girls, Amy and Caroline, people are saying they killed Hillary Robarts. Is that what you believe? No. Oh, these are wonderful. Thanks. Oh, she'd like to thank you for the flowers, by the way. They're her favourite. How's she doing? She's fine. She's just fine. And baby Stella? She's great. She was asleep when I left. Sit down. Thanks. Well, I'm sorry to say that it looks like we won't be making an arrest for the Louis Robarts murder after all. Uh-oh. Well, we've been through it all, and all the avenues seem to point to uh, Carolyn Amphlett and Amy Cam. And, of course, they're both dead. Well, what about Lessingham? I thought he was a prime suspect. Yeah, well, that's right. But we spoke to the Coast Guard, and he was where he said he was. And Meg Dennison? Well, possibly, but it's hardly the strongest motive in the world. Jealousy, after all this time? You'd have to be talking about obsession. And she doesn't strike you as a particularly obsessive personality. I'm not sure I agree with you about that. No, no, I don't see it. It's, it's, it's got to be the two girls on the boat. Teddy, you're right about one thing. The murderer was a woman. A woman who knew how the whistler killed, who knew where Hillary Robards will be shortly after nine o'clock, who failed to provide you with a feasible alibi, and knew where to find those trainers. You told Rickards you were in till 9.30, but you weren't, were you? Is that what you came to say? I know you can explain. You... It's ridiculous even to ask. Ask what? You weren't here at nine o'clock. I was. I needed to see you. All the lights were on. The record player. I thought you told Rickards you were home all evening. You just went into the garden for a bit. 
I had your key. Remember you gave me one? I'd let myself in. I called, but you didn't answer. I, I thought... What about the whistler? Weren't you frightened? Walking over the headland alone? You're frightened now, aren't you? Only what I'm thinking of. What, one little lie to the police? Is that all you're worried about? Alice, I know you're shielding him. No. No, I'm not. Were you with him when he killed her? Did you help him? No. No, I didn't do that. I wanted her dead. I didn't help anyone. And no one helped me. I planned it alone. And I did it alone. It took courage, but less than I'd imagined somehow. She died very quickly and very easily. You're shielding him! And then I threw the picture through Hillary's window. That way it looked like an act of vandalism, hatred. And what about the others, the other people, innocent suspects? What about them? Well, I made sure of giving Ryan an alibi. Who else was there? Not you, Meg? You were never a real suspect. Oh, I felt like one. When Rickard started questioning me, I felt like one. But why, Alice? Why did you do it? What for? She was blackmailing Alex. Our research data he refused to publish until his new appointment had been confirmed. She could have destroyed his whole career. Besides, I owed him a death. What now? There's the phone. Call Rickards or Dalglish. Of course, they won't be able to prove any of this. It'll be your word against mine. Whatever you decide, I know you won't go back on it. I have to tell. You let those girls be blamed for the murder. I have to. But I'd rather you did. Then just give me until tomorrow. Just to sort a few things out. I want to know why you did it. I shall say, she was taking him away from me. And they'll see me as a repressed, menopausal woman, temporarily deranged, unnatural affection, repressed sexuality. That's how men talk about women like me. This will do you good. No, thanks. Nonsense, come on. No. Whiskey makes me sick. You need it now. Drink it. It's the best remedy. No, you're quite right, Meg. It was never your drink. I'll make us some coffee and then I'll walk back with you.
Yes, the shoulder still hurts a bit, but it's improving. No more pain? Mm, no. Everyone's terribly grateful for all you're doing for the Blaineys. How many people would take on an eccentric artist with four children as a caretaker? Well, I'm doing him no favour. In a few weeks' time, he'll probably argue I should be paying him for looking after him. What day is it? Thursday. Practice. For how long? Mm. Another unfinished story. Does Alex accept, do you think, that Alice killed her? He knows the truth. He doesn't mean to say he'll admit to it. He hardly spoke at the funeral. We haven't talked about Alice and the murder since. And the open verdict that the inquest means her suicide is... Well, it's still unproven. Everything rested on my story. A not very likely tale of a woman who'd made trouble before. I'm... I'm selling up in London, you know. I'm thinking of buying Martha's Cottage. It feels my sort of place still. Hmm. It's only soil that would lose him. Maybe that's the sort of soil my roots need. <laughs>